Hello gamers, I am Mike the Zorch and we have our first episode of Inside Star Citizen for 2022. I think this is going to be a big year for Star Citizen because up until now, we've been waiting for a lot of tech to come in for the game because this is not like other MMOs. This requires some serious tech behind the scenes behind the server side in order to function because they're doing stuff in this game that's never been done before and they have to invent this tech they have the server they have server meshing they have the persistence and everything everything is going to be physicalized in the game and it's never been it's been done on a small scale in other games but it's never been done on a scale like this never been done on a scale like this and that stuff takes time to develop game development is expensive game development takes time they've been at this for they've been at this for 10 years um this iteration of star citizen that we have now has not been in development for 10 years it's actually been in development since um about 20 15, 16, but there was a version before this that was going to be not that much different from, say, the X series or uh, Wing Commander or Elite Dangerous currently is now with the Odyssey expansion. It was not going to be that different from it. And then the community voted and uh, they took it even further now and it's required some serious tech behind the scenes in order to work that tech is starting to come online and what that's doing what that tech will allow for them to finally start bringing other star systems into the game that will allow them to uncap the server limits of down up, up to 50 people because they're already implementing some things that um, prevent the servers from being full. Like they're, that when you sign on, you are paired up with a server that is not as full as you were before. Before, you know, you were paired up with a server that had, um, it does better server matchmaking basically. And so whenever Tiger was in the game and I wanted to join him, I couldn't because the server was always full. Now, it's not. But yet there are more people playing Star Citizen now than there have been. And they've been able to spread them out because the servers are virtual. They spin them up as they need them. They're not uh, affixed servers. Now, the first iteration of server meshing, they'll have fixed shards. Then the second iteration will be dynamic, where the shards will spin up when they're needed and they will they communicate with one another. So each of the shards will technically still have a 50 player limit, but they will communicate with one another. So you actually be able to have more people than that in an area and interact with them. It, it, it's complicated how it works. This this sort of thing doing this sort of network inner kind inter inner connectivity of what they're trying to do is insanely hard insanely hard and they're having to do it fast enough because this is a real-time fps this is not a uh, game like final fantasy 14 or whatever where you have certain tall or wow where you have certain la latency tolerances no this is a twitchy game and it has to be able to respond fast. Anyway, uh, let's get into this episode and uh, see what it's all about. We figured we had some cool crash sites already in the game. Ah. 
the derelict ships. We wanted to bring a sense of wonder and some mystery. We already have some yeah, crashed ships for certain missions, but like, this oh, is fat on another level. Derelict. Duty of dereliction. <laughs> In 316, we're adding a whole new series of caterpillar craft sites with exciting new puzzles mm. and awesome environments to explore. Cool. The dangers that the players are going to encounter in the new Caterpillar crash sites are the laser trip mines. Ah. There's a sense of some people have already been there and have rigged the crash sites. Players will have to get really clever to find new ways to um, approach the that didn't work. or find ways to deactivate them. Along with increased danger comes increased rewards. So. We really wanted to make use of the new loot system and give a reason to the players to explore these locations. Hmm. Now that we produced those Caterpillar derelicts for 316, that was just the tip of the iceberg. We had this hmm. long-term vision of a systemic, persistent kind of derelicts that can go on through the universe, we start looking at what the future could look like in the next few patches. We wanted to introduce the spaceship derelicts into different biome across the universe. That would be cool. Oh. A few years ago, they had a demo at CitizenCon where they found a id crashed Idris. This was the infamous one where the sandworm appeared. Um, they stopped doing presentations like that, doing pie-in-the-sky presentations of what they want to do, and they started showing what they are doing, because um, they were getting a little bit of grief for that, for showing stuff that they wanted to do, but they may not necessarily have been able to actually deliver. And... Um, people harped on them for that for a long time. Now they don't do that anymore. They, they now do presentations of stuff that they actually can deliver, that they are actually be able to deliver. And, uh, they could, they could bring in those, that derelict, um, Idris that was from that mission. That's very doable. Don't know about the sandworm. Maybe. Maybe uh, they are bringing life forms into the game. They'll be bringing in those those um, whales into um, Crusader, the um, cloud whales, the space whales. Maybe they'll be able to do it. Maybe. We'll start it with uh, the reclaimer and place it in a Nordic field. Hmm. And we explore a corroded version of it, where you start to see the yeah. inner structure, but with some plating. Reclaimers are huge. The spaceship is there for like 20 years and more, and mm. just getting rusty. We have a moon crash site. There's no atmosphere, and it's pretty dry, and it's not like terrestrial, and that was pretty awesome to work on. Mm. This spaceship was crashed into a forest. Uh. We wanted to explore the avenue of having those trees just really close to the spaceship and also That's having cool. overgrown vegetation on it. We wanted to feel that spaceship is there for many years and the nature is just taking over. Hmm. And the next is a communication crash. This spaceship is crashed on the top of a mountain. Those guys there, cool. they're just establishing a communication base where they are at the highest point and they can emit a transmission from there. Already then. I had the idea to, to, um, <laughs> to make this spaceship like crashed and it's a swampy biome. So the guys just building those tower to get above and to not be dependent of the tide. It's adding like a lot of verticality in this, and it's pretty cool. Oh. 
we all grew up with the same kind of images. You can imagine where, how, why they crashed there. Was it hostile or not? Hmm. Was it coming out from a fight? Yeah. And then to imagine the second and the third life of them, it's captivating. That could be set. That could be, to be turned into settlements. On an emotional level. As we are always looking in, on Reddit and reading all your feedback, we can't wait to see what you guys will think about those as we produce them. Hopefully you'll like it as much as we like producing them. It takes a lot to bring down a reclaimer. I know how tough those ships are. That looks like a marketplace. Derelicts are a terrific way to explore visual storytelling in Star Citizen. And not only make the Precision Universe feel more alive. Macross helmet. Macross helmet. I even lived in. But provide artists and designers alike opportunities to update and change what would otherwise be a static location into a dynamic and potentially dangerous experience for anyone that enters. But we're not done. Because what would Inside Star Citizen be without a sprint report? Mm-hmm. Lopsided. Like the overtime rules in professional football. <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's start things off with some of the continuing work for hospitals and the recent work in progress of Maria Pure of Heart, soon to be found on Hurston in the upcoming... So they're finally opening 17. this place up. While functionality will be similar to hospitals currently in the verse, you can see here the Hurston family specific touches that will help you immediately know where you are when you wake up. Oh yeah. Now this hospital already feels like an extension of the CBD players are familiar with. Work is also underway on Mercy Hospital for the once and future Levski with Greybox products. Now why are they doing this? Levski was in the game, but it was not meant to be in the Stanton system. Levski is part of the Nyx system. The only way to get the Nyx is to travel through Pyro. Because if you look on the star map that's on the Star Citizen website, they have this really, really elaborate star map of all the star systems they're going to have in the game. The only way to get to Nyx, or well, the only way that they that's known to get to Nyx, is a jump gate in Stanton to Pyro and from Pyro to Nyx. Why are they adding a hospital to Lebski? Are we going to get Py Pyro and Nyx this year? I know that we're supposed to be getting uh, more of server mushing. They getting enough to be able to add that? Because the only way that they can add this is server meshing. The only way they can, because the current servers, the way they're way they're configured now, they can't handle that much more data. They have to have it to where they can shard, they can switch from them being servers to shards and be able to shard out these areas to be able to set these areas up as separate shards. Uh, in with server meshing. That's the only way they can do it without the servers just absolutely melting down. Huh. Unless they're just doing it for consistency because they have other the other landing zones, but this isn't available in the game right now. Not until they add Nyx. And the only way you'll be able to get to Nyx is through Pyro. We do have... Pyro is going to be bigger than Stanton. Way bigger. Stanton right now is about the size of the orbit of Mercury. Pyro is going to be bigger. Pyro is going to be way bigger. It's going to be so big that most ships can't get through it. Uh, except for the really big ships. And certain ships that can carry other vessels. Like the Odyssey. Uh, there's the Liberator. That will be a transport. Uh, and they're not going to have a lot of hops, a lot of stops for refueling. So. Keep 
an eye on this. Progress on the lobby, including nurse station, elevators, <laughs> insurance and pharmacy booths, and more. Hmm. Let's switch gears now over to mining gadgets, which the EUP ah. team has now successfully completed the full loop for. You need these for asteroid mining. Ahead of its release in the upcoming Alpha 317. It starts simply with buying a mining gadget at any shop that carries it and bringing it back to your ship to place in its local inventory. Mm -hmm. In this case, our prospector. Now take off, find yourself a mining deposit, and scan it like normal. Here, we found a node with an instability of 0.91, which doesn't usually make for a great mining experience. Also, keep an eye on that 0.18 resistance. We'll come back to that later. Hmm. Next, we're going to pull our mining gadget out of the ship's local inventory and equip it into our personal, because it's time to go out and land on the rock like we're Bruce Willis in Armageddon. <laughs> or Ben Affleck. Or in my case, the crazy Russian. <laughs> Once we get there, we're going to place our device. In this case, an Okunas model specifically designed to reduce instability and then adjust our waveform accuracy to at least 90% before we activate and leave. Huh. Then, when we return to the ship and recheck our scanning results, we can see our instability has now been cut down to 0.54, while our resistance has bumped up to a 0.28. Yeah, everything's got a price. It's at this point that you can mine, break apart, and collect like usual. And in many cases, even recollect your mining gadget to be used again in the future. It's a fun new wrinkle that's ready to go for huh. Alpha 317 at cool. the end of this quarter. Meanwhile, the vehicle experience team has been experimenting in the world of maybe kind of can we do this with testing the viability and operability of cluster missiles that you can see here. Oh. As well as cluster bombs, where one breaks apart into <clears> many. <throat> and as you can see here, because of the systemic nature underlying every aspect How? of the system, the explosion of one ends up knocking subsequent drops off their targets. Yeah. It's safe to say more testing and prototyping will be needed before the team considers adding such munitions to the but persistent cluster missiles. Oh. I liked adding the cluster missiles, uh, the missiles that fire in swarms to my ship in uh, Free Space. Actually, Free Space 2 had them. I, I always liked doing that. It's like, it's like very anime <laughs> missiles just shooting out in big swarms, just, just zoning in on a target, and it, it can maybe dodge or... Um, Pools a few of them with uh, countermeasures, but not all of them. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move inside where it's safer and take a look at recent work on the Drake Vulture, seen here in its final art pass. Ah, as a single I want this. Vehicle from Drake Interplanetary, this is the salvage the ship. The interior is expectedly sparse and utilitarian, with the bridge seen here, hmm. the habitation area. What's well, a Drake ship? Of course, it's going to be Spartan. Well, it's a little bigger than I expected. And the processing area. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to have to be a little larger because it's going to have to hold all that material. Oh, I almost forgot. Sorry, everyone. Here's the bathroom, too. <laughs> the shitter. Ooh, is, is, is that soundproofing? <laughs> In space, no one can hear you fart. <laughs> We've also got this look at continuing gray box progress in the RSI Scorpius, where one sprint was for completing the main okay. body and carving out space for I've the been components. I'm waiting Weapons, for this one. More Me and Tiger have been talking about getting this. this size. And then another sprint where it's a bit further along the gray box phase.
Damn. The landing gear. And let's not forget the real hotness. It's wings fully extended. Oh, that is so X-Wing. That is so X-Wing. Work also continues on the hull A as the team focuses on finalizing more intricate details of the extending and retracting. This thing's taking them a long time to do because everything has to work physicalized. They don't cheat. On most, on most things, they don't cheat. Well, they do at the elevators. The elevators cheat. They don't have shafts they go through. They're supposed to, technically. But um, they don't. But these, this is supposed to actually physically fold into one another and close up. And they have had the hardest time getting this to work. Now... I know on the Nomad they had the they had the ladder that drops down. I think they've been working on. I think they worked on that in order to prototype what they want to do with this, or to prototype what they wanted to do with this. So let's and the see here. assembly at the rear. Oh yeah. Oh, that is that looks very X-wingy with the engines. And then the Banu Merchantman continues its early white box explorations okay. for its massive interior. There's another one that's been taking that people have been waiting for. Lots of nice movement to it when it's all said and done. As well as a small brig that's currently located towards the front <laughs> of the ship that will continue to evolve with more of its trademark Banu Merchantman. in the brig. White box phase continues. And before <laughs> we leave ships this week, as some folks may have... This thing. This thing, when I ever I see this thing, and I, that's the scale. That's a big ship. Whenever I see this thing, I think the Twilight. Uh, do you know what the Twilight is? Have you ever seen Clone Wars? That's the ship that Anakin and Ahsoka flew around in. I think they they took it from Ventress or or or, or they, well, it, they took it from one Ventress or they took it from um. Or Dooku, I forget who they took it from, that they acquired it from. Or was it... Was it that hut? That stupid hut that got killed? I forget which one had the ship. I know they, know they had it pretty early on, and it was their own personal vessel that they flew around in whenever they needed to go anywhere. Uh, when they weren't in their starfighters. So, this looks like that. It, 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 it just, every time I see this thing, it screams twi the Twilight. Someone over there is a fan of Clone Wars. Guess from a recent newsletter sneak peek that Drake Corsair has begun its journey through the ship pipeline with this look at early white box progress for its exterior. And we're going to continue to follow along with this progress as this most recent creation by the legendary Jim Martin goes from concept to reality throughout this year. Cool. Spacecaping. Now, it's been a while since we checked in on the universe's gas cloud tech, and the environment teams recently completed a sprint exploring some Lagrange point looks for the various planets of the upcoming Pyro system. Hmm. Each star system, planetary area, and planet itself is designed with a specific color palette in mind at the earliest parts of the process. The clouds they have the right now are pretty cool. May and will change as the lighting oh, that is in. cool. Looks like the pillar looked like the pillars of, of a creation. As the call has gone out to create more dynamic and in some cases more recognizable debris for the players to explore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're on the road to Pyro this year, and you can expect to see less oh, okay. as 2022 progresses. They're gonna bring Pyro and this year, then they're gonna go, bring Nyx, because Nyx is very small. You saw at Citizen Con for outlaw space stations and moving through white box phase oh, design, the variety of them you will encounter scattered throughout the pyro system that's Including cool some areas that share some assets with the colonialism outposts found planet side mm. all of cans of soda throughout while keeping the possibility of ai traversal in mind that is so you know, star wars is gonna get caught up in here the wrong way and that's how you get vera at the end of superman <laughs> that was a joke for about 16 of you. God. Here's another one. I got it's that kind of joke. It's like Hassan's opposite there. 
That was just a joke for Ian Leland. Finally, here's some video follow-up of the continuing white box progress of an exterior combined with the space gaping you saw before. Um. Oh, they have the lightnings and the gas clouds. Cool. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the new derelicts in 316.1 are just the next step in a massive new journey towards a more vibrant and dynamic set of historical collisions for players to discover and explore in the future. That the vehicle experience team are going to give the VFX team some high blood pressure as they continue <laughs> to explore the possibilities cluster weapons bring to the persistent mm -hmm. universe. That the Drake Corsair is coming. Cool. And that Pyro continues to let our artists explore the far reaches of color and general disorderliness. Now, don't forget that Xenothreat is returning once again to the stand system. Be sure you check out the website. Ah, and the social so they're media bringing that back. For Inside okay. Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next time. That's week. cool. Alrighty then. So, they're bringing Xenothreat back. Alrighty then. Yeah, Xeno Threat, that's a uh PvP PvE um thing where there is this gang that's trying to um take over a part of the Stanton system. It's sort of like the Nine Tails lockdown that they did. It's similar to it. I believe that this this one has the Idris fight. Uh where they bring in and Idris, and you have to gang up on it. We may have made some changes, so this, so some things may happen in different, in a different order uh, with this one. So we will see. I I want to participate in that. Uh, we're part of Space Tomatoes Org, the Garden Initiative, and so we'll probably get with them on their Discord and. Uh, get into those. Um, I'd really like to do those. I would really like to. So, we'll have to get on the, their Discord, talk to them, and find out if they're gonna do it. There probably are. I mean, Space Tomato's gonna do Xeno Threat. He's going to do it. So, I'll get in there and, and, and stream also, um these events because th that's definitely something that would I could really stream and show off because I have some com I have some combat ships and I'm not too bad when it comes to comes to flying in combat so uh yeah, I look forward to that anyway this has been this has been another Inside Star Citizen, the first one for 2022. This is a weekly thing where I react to these videos and uh, we'll see what uh, comes up next week from them. So what I get from this is they are looking at finally bringing Pyro into the game. And if they're going to do Pyro, then they're bringing Nyx. Because Nyx is a much smaller, simpler star system. One of the planets is already done, which is the planet where Levski... Well, actually, it's a planet toy. It's more like an asteroid where Levski is at. So bringing that in be very easy for them. Bringing in that system will be very easy. So, 2022, getting two star systems for the price of one into the game? I mean, if they're getting server meshing done enough to do that, to actually bring, finally, finally, Pyro, this, this, they bring in two new star systems. They bring in, by, by the end of 2022, they bring in Pyro and Nyx. Because Nyx, Nyx should be done. Nyx is a much smaller, simpler star system. If they bring both in at the end of 2022, that'll shut the critics up. 
because then there's they're not just one this is not just one star system anymore it proves that they can actually release more star systems into the game it means that they're actually working on it that it's not a scam they're actually adding content they're actually improving the game which which they are and if you follow if i mean if since i started playing in 2019 the end of 2019 since i started playing star citizen has changed significantly there they added so much crusader was just a placeholder that you couldn't visit you couldn't actually land on it. it was just a ball with a texture on it now it's an actual gas giant with an atmosphere you can fly into and land at a floating star port city and they added they added microtech they've added oh, so many things they added the gas clouds this, they've added several more ships it's just it's amazing the stuff that they've done in this game and people have the audacity to say it's a scam they're making clear progress the the 30k errors are virtually almost gone in rare occasions they still happen very rare occasions they still happen especially if a server is like really full they can still happen but 90 percent of the time 30k errors are gone 30k errors are gone 90 percent of the time that's major progress for this game anyway um uh, that's been uh Dortch reacts to inside star citizen i'll be back with another reaction to inside stars next week and i have been promising that episode of the professor forever it is coming i am still working on ideas for it i may just have to just knuckle down and actually get it done anyways thank you for watching i've been mike the zorch and i will see you next time